Good morning, this is Matthew Wright in Chorley and I'm here with Father Marsden at uh, Astley Park. Good morning. It's, Good morning, Matthew. It's uh, Saturday the... What date is it today, Father? 28th, I think. 28th of January. Yeah. And why are we freezing here on a Saturday morning? Why are we standing here at the Cenotaph? Well, we've just been here for a Holocaust Memorial Day service. Uh, that's to uh, honour the victims, pray for them, and, and to remember oh, the, uh, sure the dreadful well, events of the Nazi Holocaust, okay. uh, directed primarily against the Jews during the Second World War. Uh, you're not Jewish. No. I'm not, not Jewish. No. And I didn't, s you know, noticeably see... I have Jewish friends. I had a very good Jewish friend at the university. Okay. You know, but, uh, Why are we here in Chorley in Lancashire commemorating something that happened 60 years ago across the other side of Europe? Because it was one of the worst ever genocides to take place on European soil. A genocide? A genocide, the slaughter of a particular race, in this case the Jewish race, whom Hitler had uh, sworn really to wipe off the face of the earth. Right, okay. Uh, it's just unbelievable, isn't it, the, the numbers involved. You know, it's, it's very difficult to get an idea of scale, isn't it? I mean, what sort of numbers are we talking about? Well, you're talking, under the Nazis, in the death camps, you're talking of six million Jews, primarily, but then also three million Catholic Poles and two million Soviets, Russian and Ukrainian prisoners of war. So it's 11 the, plus on, Romanies and... Yeah, one of the biggest mass yeah. extermination um, campaigns ever carried out. I mean, there have been other dreadful ones under Stalin, but uh, the Nazi Holocaust was perhaps more systematically evil than, than any of the others. But what is the purpose of remembering each year? It's to, well, as I say, it's to honour the victims, to pray for them, okay. pray for those who, there's still people alive, you know, who came through the camps. I mean, yes. uh, David and uh, Ed Miliband's mother, actually, was, yes. in, was in one of the Jewish, uh, was in one of the Nazi okay. camps and uh, was protected by a German doctor and by convents and Catholic Poles and, and so on. Do you think, so do you think we learn any around. lessons from remembering history? Yes, I think we learn an awful lot, and those who are ignorant of history are condemned to repeat it as the old saying goes and by we it's to remind us of the great evils that follow when any one race or type of person becomes classified by the authorities as subhuman that's the dreadful danger when we start to say you're, that person you're not as good as me being. you know yeah well, not you, only that but you yeah. don't even have human rights you're subhuman you're not a proper human being does it worry you when you hear today certain minorities scapegoated for the ills of society, be they economic, be we hear about immigrants coming to the UK and taking people's jobs. If you're a student of history, you remember that back in the 30s, the, the Jews were blamed for many of the economic and social ills. Yes, and, and also, for example, the, the chronically ill, the handicapped, the, um, the mentally ill, you know, were, were eliminated by Hitler. Um, People who had no children, perceived children value. Children before yeah. birth are defined in this society not to be persons as well, aren't they? Abortion. Yes, exactly. It's another form of, of Holocaust. And uh, right. it's not something we really discuss, is it? We don't put it in those terms. We sweep it under the carpet. Yeah, it's not necessarily politically correct, is it? You know, to put it's it in those terms. It's very politically incorrect. Like there's but, uh, something like, yeah. you know, uh, for example, in Belarus, which was invaded by the Nazis, they lost something like three million people as well. So in addition to the Holocaust, days like this, I'd imagine they'll have to remember all the dead. Yes, yes. I mean, the, for example, under Stalin and the communists, the, he, he exterminated between six and ten million Ukrainians by famine, deliberately, yeah. you know, because they resisted collectivization. The Second World War, there were 25 million victims in the Soviet Union, I think, is, is the figure. So, you know, the, these, I mean, we're very, very lucky. We should count our blessings more that we do live in a time of, uh, of peace, you know, well, more or less, although... It's funny, we do in Europe. <laughs> but, but Afghanistan and Iraq and... And, and Africa, the... Uh, yeah, the, the Congo. The and Congo and Rwanda. Yeah. And genocide isn't something that's gone, is it? Gone away? No, it's I think potentially it's, it's always a danger, yeah, and that's why, by reminding ourselves, perhaps we, we help to stave off future genocides as well, or future tendencies in that direction, you know? Okay. Mm. Well, Father Marsden, it's obviously very cold, and I know you've got a, uh, a reception to go to now, yeah. but thank you very much for uh, saying hello to us today. Okay, thank you very much. Have a great day.